All right. Let me see whether I can let me, let me remove this first. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of The Goal Difference. I won't say this is a podcast episode. This is a kind of an impromptu preview video. Um, we're going we're gonna to talk about the Singapore Cup Finals, uh, the 2022 version of it. It's going to be a very interesting finals. It's tomorrow, held tomorrow at the Jalan Besar Stadium. First and foremost, thanks everyone for tuning in. If you guys are here, thanks. And um, let me start off by saying it's good to see Joshua back again. So how are you doing, Joshua? I'm doing good, you know. Mostly every Friday night we talk about some Premier League football, but it's good to talk more about local football this week. Yeah. So the decision was because of the fact there's no Premier League football, obviously, because uh, ramping up to the World Cup, which is very soon. Yeah. Uh, we thought that you know we do some more local football content because, and also uh, I will be addressing some of the some things that we want to mention, you know, about the fact that we are going, we are very thankful of the support and whatnot. But yeah, before we talk about that. Uh, we're going to talk about some local football, Singapore football. So there'll be some comments here. Let me just address some of the comments. It says, um, FPL Matt Day. He says, I'm enjoying l- learning football uh, about in Singapore. So FPL Matt Day, a big Australian FPL um, pundit, if you can call him. He gives a very good advice. So thanks, FPL Matt. I'm really well, going to miss FPL, to be honest. Yeah, 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 yeah. I heard some people complaining about the World Cup uh, fantasy and stuff yeah. like that. But, you know, hopefully... I know. Maybe we can play the, the Singapore Premier League. Yeah, fantasy next, next year. Yeah, they next have season. one, but I tried playing for a few weeks. It's a little bit complicated. So mm. hopefully they manage like streamline, fair, fair. Yeah, if, make it easier for fans to join in. If Kopitovic is still playing, he's definitely in my team every week. So uh, then they say very in- insightful videos for someone who isn't familiar with Singaporean football. Thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, appreciate it. If I'm not wrong, you are a Spurs fan. If I'm not wrong, uh, I'm not too sure, but I'll all. Uh, Top lad, top lad. And then uh, onto the ball says, let's go. He's a Liverpool fan. Onto the ball. So thanks. Big up to you, Scott, for tuning in. Um, Coach's Corner say yes. Thanks, Coach's Corner. Uh, South African, British, YouTuber, uh, Chelsea fan. So thanks for tuning in. He also does like cricket news and whatnot. And then uh, last but not least, we have Adit. He says, sadly, Royce and Lestian won't be playing against each other. <laughs> Talking about the Borussia and... Uh, Sailors, Sailors next Thursday, right? Next Thursday, which we will be there also. Uh, but let's talk about the first uh, priority, which is tomorrow's Singapore Cup final. Uh, let's learn. So he says he's not British. Sorry. South African? Uh, yeah, we, uh, my bad. Apologies there. All right, so let's continue on. So thanks everyone for tuning in. So let's talk about the biggest why we are here today. And it's about the 2022 Singapore Cup final. So if you guys didn't know, it is between the likes of how Tampines Rovers versus How Gang United. So Tampines Rovers are the defending champions of the Singapore Cup. And the last edition was played in 2019. Yeah, so uh, it's going to be a banger of a game. I think there's be a lot of uh, the crowd's going to be massive, you know, uh, buzzing atmosphere as usual. And yeah. let's and let me put in there, we will be there. So Joshua and myself we will be there. So hope to see you guys down there. If you do see us, please come and say hi to us. Definitely approach us. We would definitely love to talk to you guys. Uh, you know, um, if, if you guys been following the YouTube uh, channel, so we've been doing more vlogs, you know, so I think the vlogs have been pretty well received, I would imagine. And that's why we want to move on to our next point, which is we appreciate the love and support thus far. You know, it gives us the kind of energy to do this kind of content, you know, all for the love of the game. And we love talking about football as always. Yeah, Joshua. So uh, there's one more comment. He says, uh, just South African. Yep, Coach's Corner. All right. Cheers, cheers, mate. Cheers for joining in. And yeah, so um, appreciate the love and support. We will be there and let's go through some analysis. We are going to talk deeper about uh, each team, their road to the finals. And then we talk about like certain statistics, certain players to look out for, uh, what are the deciding, you know, like matchups we're going to look out at. And then we will give our predictions for yeah. the final. So did you expect these finals between Tampines versus Haugang? I think we did talk briefly about um, the Singapore Cup a few weeks ago. Mm. When we were, you know, having our usual podcast, we had a section talking about Singapore Cup. And yeah. then we talked about, you know, who's the favourites. Mm. And then I think we both agreed at that time that the favourites were going to be Sailors and Albrecht, yeah. without a doubt, right? But at that time, I recall saying that, you know, don't count Potentially, yes. Out. Because, of course, you know, Sailors and Albrecht were in the same group. So at that time, we expected both of them to go through. Yep. In the end, of course, Sailors didn't make it. Yep. But from the other group, you know, Tampanese to me were the their favourite and the other three would battle it out and of course Hao Kang managed to squeak their way through by of course beating Tampanese. Tampanese. Yeah, so when it came to the semi-finals you know, you would have thought it would have been a 
Tampines Albrex final. Yes. I thought so. I'm not sure about you, but I thought so. And if you look at it that way, I think it's unexpected. And I think even the bookies thought it was unexpected because yeah. you know one of our friends was sharing with us that at one point in the group stage, the odds for Hao Kang winning 75. the cup was like $75 to one. So I mean, I would say hardly anyone at that time would have expected it at all. Yep. And even the first leg against Albrex, I'm sure we'll talk more about it later. Yes. They were by far the second best team. And somehow they managed to get a draw. And and then you watch the second leg, right? Which they were really good yep. in. Yeah. They flipped the switch completely. So to your point, I agree, absolutely agree. I think likewise, I would have thought when we saw the semi-finals matchup, it would have been a Tampanese Rovers versus Albrex final. But Hao Gang in the first leg, I think they squeaked through with a uh, they were really fortunate to uh, get a draw because yeah. you know Albrex was hammering them quite a bit but the second leg was a different story it was fantastic from the second leg from the cheetahs so before we move on we have another comment here from pp spartan he says waiting since 1998 for my hometown club haogang to clinch our first trophy let's create history um 1h1h which is the haogang hools uh, hashtag so thanks for tuning in uh, spartan we're going to give our predictions you know i'm a Geelang fan but you'll be surprised you see who are we supporting Actually, not really a surprise because uh, it's against Tampines. But yeah, uh, with that being said, yeah, I, I agree with you. I think the, the fact that the bookies were so like very shocked that Hao Gang would be because you know we'll we'll definitely go through uh, Hao Gang's point of view later. You know, more in depth analysis of Hao Gang. Um, and yeah, I we, I think we wouldn't expect if you at start of the cup, I'd probably say Alberex for sure because they had a very good run of form to end the season. Yeah. But I think after the FES dinner, all of them were like. Let's put it uh, maybe hungover or something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you could say a very big contributing factor was Kodai Tanaka yeah. missing the second leg. Yeah. And you know, even tonight, it looked like they really missed him as well yeah. in the third and fourth placing game. For sure. Uh, Kodai Tanaka. So uh, just before we move on to Tampanese, in the vlog that I was in, I didn't post this footage, right? But actually, I saw Kodai Tanaka in a walking boot. I was like, mm. I, I, initially, I didn't know that he was injured. So when I saw him in the boot, I was like, hey, isn't that Kodai? That's like, oh no, that's not good for uh, what for Albrex because I think the first leg he got injured, which is, I uh, well, Albrex, we probably won't talk about Albrex and Haugang. If you do want to see the action, you can watch our vlog, the most recent video. Uh, but yeah, they did miss Kodai today, um, to yesterday, I'm sorry, Tuesday. And then today also, they just played and they won the third placing. You can yeah. see they will struggle a bit on the offensive front without, I mean, with Ilhan scoring two goals, but I think without Ilhan, they'll probably find, uh, they'll probably be a bit lackluster in the front. Yeah, you could say yep. perhaps even without Kodai, you know, sailors might have just had enough to squeak yes, the title. Yes, I would definitely agree. That, that, that is a definite, pos definite possibility. Yeah, so with that being said, okay, so let's move on to our uh, agendas today. So our first point, the road to the finals for Tampines Rovers. So the defending uh, Singapore Cup champions. So let's see whether... All right, so as I mentioned earlier on, they are the defending champions of the cup and the last edition of it was in held in 2019. So um, they won the Warriors. It was a 3-2 victory. And then a fun fact, Warriors, they had uh, Sahil Suhaimi in, on, on, who scored an own goal for uh, the Warriors. So he's going to probably find retribution. Wrong, I think it was Ro Chu who scored the winning goal in this game. Yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not wrong. Yeah. I'm so, not wrong, yeah. yeah. But I mean, looking at this, I mean, you see a lot of very familiar faces who yes. are not there anymore. Very. I mean, you can see the likes Madhu. of Shadan, Madhu, Daniel Bennett. Yep. Yeah, Amirul Atli. Actually, a lot of these players have gone to the sailors. Sailors. You think about it. Yeah. But then again, you see some players who are still there right now, like Yasser Hanapi. Then I think Mimenovic is there. Yeah, Joe Chu has come back this season. And Gavin Lee and Musafic yep. in the coaching team. So at least there's still some constants, although there's been like what you say, a lot of familiar, not a lot of faces that have moved on to uh, other clubs. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, just wanted to mention that they are the defending champions. I think they've won it nine times. I don't know. They are the most decorated team in Singapore in terms of the cup competition for Singapore Cup. And yeah, uh, with that being said, let's move on to our next point. So the road to the finals, right? So let's move on. Okay. So let me move this banner. All right, so the road to the finals. So this is their last five matchups. So they first start off with Geelang versus Tampanese at our Tampanese house, which I also did a vlog. So if you guys yeah. want to see, go and go ahead and have a look at the vlog. It's on my Virgin vlog. And they won 3-2. Uh, I think Geelang were very unlucky. It should have been a, a deserved draw for Geelang. got the winner, right? Kyogas got the winner. One of the, the last winner. kicks of the yes, game. Yes, Nakumura's got the, the winner. So that was a bit unfortunate for Geelang. But, you know, uh, wins a win. And then they moved on to play against Tanjung Paga, which they soundly beat 4-1. 
And then the spicy news, they lost to Haugang United 1-0 at the Haugang Stadium. This was when Sahil Suhaimi scored the hand of God. <laughs> it was a free kick and then later it looked like a, the whole Tampines team were like shouting saying that it was a handball but it's very the angles were so the camera angle didn't pick couldn't it all players blocking so it's hard to see but it, there could be a potential shot for a handball but that was the only goal uh, they scored another goal actually but it was ruled offside or foul player. so it could have been like 2 nil, 3 nil for Haugang so quite convincing Haugang victory uh, then after they moved on to against Ballester in the semi-finals and yeah that was a deep a uh, Demolition of a game. Yeah, Boris of a hat trick. Boris of a hat trick. Nakamura. Did goals. Yes. Uh-huh. Yep. Taufik scored. Taufik well, scored. I think. Yeah. Yes, so. Yeah. As well? yeah. yeah. Uh, sorry, Gilgar didn't score. I think this game, if I'm not wrong, eight goals. Man. Yeah. Sorry, a bit out of touch. It's a bit hard to keep track. It's a bit hard to keep track. Definitely. Then um, that, so that was a demolition, and then uh, it really became like a foregone conclusion that Tampines is going to make it to the final. So yeah, the next fixture, which played on Tuesday, they won against uh, Baleste one 0 yeah. So yeah, just a, I see quite a people, quite a few people watching right now. So just an update: Albrecht just won a uh, Baleste for the third place, three two. Do you watch the game, Joshua? I did have it on, but I was you know doing some other stuff. Yeah. I did you know see some of the key moments, mm. which was of course Ilhan's two goals, yes. and then they got a third before the second half. You know, Balestier really put on a really yep. good fight back, and if not for Koga and goals for Albrecht probably would have equalized. Equalized definitely. And maybe brought it to penalties. Yeah, that was a very tight game actually. Um, Ilhan instrumental part of the victory but if you go see an Instagram could potentially be on the move so I don't want to say any more I don't want to speculate much more all right so we move on um so this was the run up to the finals um I think Tampines most of the games they played really well convincingly convincing victories except for the Haogang one which was a defeat which is going to be a repeat in the finals so we have to comment um he says Joel FMG says, fancy Haugang to win. Yep. Thanks for joining. Thanks for tuning. Thanks for the comment. Uh, we appreciate it. And yeah, fancy Haugang to win. You know, the fact that they their last victory, the head-to-head, they won Tempani. So that could be a good indicator as maybe uh, Haugang has the right tactics and the right players, personnel to go up against uh, Tempani. Geelang as well. Geelang had, you know, the first game, they, they played really well against Tempani, to be honest. Perhaps, but you know, you can always point out in that one nil win they had Haugang Stadium. Yeah, true. So the pitch, you no, know, does play a part. Big and factor. And home tomorrow's support. game is on artificial pitch, so you know that would be another factor to yes. consider. Yes, yes, uh, big factor. The fact that Haugang played at home and they won, uh, natural grass against artificial pitch, and then you know Jalan Besar and Old Tampines Hub, uh, our Tampines Hub, sorry, um, both artificial pitch. So that yep. could play into a favor for Tampines. But as I said, I won't really say that it will be home crowd for Tampines advantage because Haugang, I bet you, I think both. Uh, fans are going to really come alive and you know attend the game. I think so, because it's the final game of the season uh, in Singapore, right? For the the whole year, the penultimate game just played uh, two, one hour ago, and I think this is going to be a very interesting like uh, matchup between the two. Okay, so thanks, Joel, for a comment. So we have another comment here from uh, John. Uh, what do you think of Joel Chu? Fantastic. All right, so. To this comment, I think we shall move on to, we just jump straight to that, that uh, segment, right? So we're going to talk about the key factors of Tampanese. So to address uh, your, your, your question, John, let's go to the Joel Chu effect. So that was one of our talking points. So Joel Chu, um, he came back to Tampanese, re-signed a long-term deal. And he's, you know, yes, he was only played like, ever since he came back, let me check the stats. He's only played... Um, he's only played one. I think just yeah, maybe the one or two substitute, games. Yeah, three substitute appearance in the league, and then one start for the cup and four substitute appearance for the cup. But I think it's really for me. Let me start off first. Uh, when you see him play, I think it really he's got that kind of it factor that you're looking for in you know in the midfield. You know, especially they got a strong midfield with Kyoga yeah. uh, anchoring the midfield. And I think he's been fantastic, you know, addition. It's like a last minute transfer for Tampanese, you know, a, a bit of a surge of injection that Tampanese needs to uh, end the season strong. And which is what they're doing now. They're ending the season really strong with a cup finals appearance. Your thoughts about Joel Chu? Yeah, you know, I think even when he was at Young Lions the past one, two years, I always told you, yes. you know, I love watching Joel Chu play yeah. because in my eyes, I think he's one of the, definitely one of the best technically gifted Singaporean midfielders. Yes. He can really keep the ball. You know, people talk about his size, but he kind of reminds me of a Singaporean Marco Verratti oh, wow. in some sense. And he's really added that kind of, you know, 
He really Stability. Fits, yeah, he fits in the fits way Tampanese plays perfectly. And when you see him combining with the likes of Boris and then Kyoga. And Yase Hanapi. Yep. Yase and Ong Yuen, It's fantastic to watch. Yeah, really fantastic because of the fact that uh, because like what Joshua said, uh, Joshua has been following more local football than me as of re- I mean over the years. But as of recent, I'm starting to catch on. But yeah, he's been as what he rightly mentioned. He's always been saying, "Hey, look out for Joel Chu," you know, from the Young Lions. Now he's back in Tampines. Fantastic player, I got to say. Yeah, I mean, you know, Very playing good. at the at Tampines is always going to make him improve a lot faster yes, than he was other, at Young Lions. Of course, of course. With the likes of uh, Kyoga leading the line, you know, help uh, probably guiding his play as well. I think it's fantastic. So the drill through effect. So to answer your question, John, I think he's been fantastic for Tampanese and a young, bright talent to look out for. Um, and also, we want to congratulate him also. Uh, only today, it was announced that he's also part of the esports team for the Western. You know, what a lad, man. He can play good football. Dola Kasim recipient award. Can play FIFA really well. Maybe he can go up against you. Joshua is the better FIFA player compared to me. But you're a bit rusty, yeah? You haven't played in a while. I haven't played in about one, two years. But, yeah. you know, always looking forward to a match and of course. see how it comes up. Yeah, yeah, but, you know, hopefully, you know, the next step for him is to secure regular football, hopefully yes. next season. And then perhaps, I don't think he's been caught up by the national squad yet. No. So, hopefully get his first call up. You know, now Shah Shahiran is a regular in... The squad, he's going to be back in Tampines in the forthcoming season. So, yeah, maybe this will be the midfield for Singapore in years to come. Yeah, definitely. If you can build that kind of chemistry, you never know. With maybe Joshua Pereira also anchoring them. There's a defensive mid. Anchoring yeah, that I could mean, be our future like, for Singapore. Harris midfield. has transitioned back to centre-back. Centre back. Yep. Shadan is getting a bit older. Uh, Safwan has had his injury issues of late. So yeah, perhaps, you know, it's time for the new generation to step up. Yes, for sure. All right. So thank you, John, for your question. So at least we've addressed the one of the talking points for the keynotes for Tampanese Rovers. So thank you for tuning in. Appreciate the support. And then we move on to the, f- initially was supposed to be the first point. But let's talk about bad boy Boris Kopitovic. Yeah, so let's see. I'm going to block. Yeah, sorry. It's going to block the... Okay, so bad boy Boris Kopitovic. Uh, is there anything much to be said about him? I think everyone has given him his uh, flowers and he's rightly deserved, you know, the praise and, and his, what he's achieved this year. I, I don't know whether he's still the highest scorer in a top league still in this calendar yet. Probably. Uh, probably still, yeah. right? Because, you know, you know, his goal scoring is what? It's now 41 goals this year. So he's, you know, above the likes of Mbappé and Lewandowski, just to let you guys know. And if Manchester United is looking for a striker, you know, now Ronaldo and all his issue, Rashford missing blanks, they should look to sign Boris, bad boy Boris Kapitovic. He's going to yeah, be a fantastic signing. Yeah, it's a big signing. pity he's been, you know, left out of the yep. Serbia squad for the World Cup. I was really excited to see him play in the World yes, Cup. Yes, yes. But anyway, <laughs> jokes aside, yeah. you know, it's right that, you know, he's been getting interest from the likes of, you know, reportedly Korea, mm. Malaysia, yes. the regional giants. And you know, if an offer comes for him, I'll be yeah, for sure. surprised yeah. to see him, you know, let it slip. Yeah, worth 200000 on transfer market. I think probably a bit more with his form and he's been absolutely the focal point in Tampanese uh, offense and of course the team. So if you can see on the screen, his stats, uh, he's got 35 goals. He's the highest scorer in the league. Uh, two goals ahead of Kodai, if I'm not wrong. Uh, in the league, yeah, yeah, in the league. There. And then we've all addi- added up. He's got 41 goals this year. He's a great beast of a player. Uh, bad boy. So let's go through some of the comments. Uh, Zachary says, Boris is such a beast. Yes, we agree with you. And thanks for the comment. And he says, but how Gang looks a strong side. All right. So maybe you can see a bit of how Gang biasness. Here. Yeah, I agree. You know, how Gang looks definitely a good run of form after beating uh, the defending SPL champions, Albert Snigata. And then Su says, <laughs> This is the most well M comment. So this is our good friend Ryan. Thank you so much for tuning. See, sweet, right? Manchester United fan, and thanks for tuning in. Appreciate. It. And then he said, Azakri says it's going to be a very tight game. Yeah, most possibly so. You know, tight game, possibly a very high scoring game affair. You know, we'll, we'll, it's left to be seen. But stay tuned for our predictions. Thanks for the comment again. And then uh, Raymond Sim says, Ho- hopefully how Gang win. Oh, so you can see the maybe the goal difference. Maybe I've been we did the vlog. I'm getting a bit more Haogang fans here on the stream. So thanks for tuning in, everyone. Uh, we'll see. We'll see whether what's our predictions later. But it, whoever wins is going to be a fantastic game of football. You know. Uh, next comment before we move on. Marsha says, Elena says, hopefully Haogang win. 
sensing a bit of one side bias. Attracting a lot yeah. of Hong Kong fans. Uh, there, yeah, maybe I need to go. A, maybe I need to go a, a Tampines vlog and try and attract some of their fans over. Well, but I mean, you did a Tampines Geelong match, so. But I was like with solely Geelongs, you know, maybe the Tampines rub a bit of. Uh, bad blood with the Tampanese fans. Okay, whatever the case, thanks so much everyone for the comments. We really uh, love to see that. And then we move on to the next point for the keynote for Tampanese Rovers. So, bad boy Boris Kopitovic, he poten- you think he's going to move? I mean, yeah, I think it's quite likely. But you know, it's yeah. good to see that he's given Gavin Lee a lot of credit for the work he's done with him. You yeah. know, he's talked about how Gavin Lee has worked a lot on his build-up play. Mm. And you can see, you know, it's not just goals. He's created a lot of goals as well yes. this season. Definitely. So it's really great to see and he's going to be a big loss for Tampanese if course. he does move. Yeah, I think it's going to be a very big loss, you know, um, in the league. As well. If you see the trend of the league, uh, what we are trending towards, you just need to have, a no offense, a, a foreigner leading the line and then it will bring up the play of the whole team because I think the foreigner with their stature and then with uh, a, a bit more experience in the foreign leagues, they give that kind of experience that the Singapore teams and players would uh, gravitate towards too. I mean, we've seen it in recent seasons with Plazibat when he was yes. at Hokkang, then he was at Sailors as well. Yep. And then, you know, there's a likes of Zuzul from Ballester, now he's no, at Gelang. Gelang. And then, of course, Kopitovic last few seasons at Tampanese as well. Yes. All right. So, next comment. Uh, Joel says, Maurice, Andre Maurice loves to shoot, but is he shooting at the right places? <laughs> I just saw one of the highlights for the previous Haugang Tampanese in the Singapore Cup, he skyrocketed one shot where it was quite open in the penalty box and he skyrocketed up quite high. So, quite sad to see that. Um, uh, well, you know, in the second leg when he came out, I thought he brought a lot of composure yes. to the Haugang midfield. Right? Yes, a yes. A lot of class. You know, it was his ball for the fourth goal, right? Christchurch yes. cut in and, you yep. know, sealed the tie. It was a very brilliant move for Haugang to bring him on because, you know, um, later we'll talk about a bit of Haugang's point of view, but it, it, he brought in a bit of stability in the midfield that Haugang sorely needed. And to uh, close off the game, I think that he was a big factor and like what you said, the assist to, for Krychek at the end. See the highlights if you want to watch our vlog and you can see the goal. Uh, on paper, uh, Al says, uh, on paper, I'll say probably Tampanese are better, but I think Haugang will be riding high on that second leg win, making it quite even going into tomorrow. Fantastic. Thank you for the comment, Al. Yeah, I think... I think everyone will agree that uh, Tampanese on paper looks really good. But uh, Haogang, as you always say, the momentum riding their waves and the Haogang holes and the fans will be there. I think you could see momentum swinging onto Haogang side. You know, honestly, this kind of things can go both ways, I feel. Yeah. Sometimes Fair. when you put that much into a game, when was it? It was Wednesday? Tuesday. 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 Okay, I mean, mm. granted they got four days of rest. But you know, sometimes when you put that much in physically, emotionally, mm. it can backfire. I mean, yep. you're riding on that momentum, but there may be a bit of fatigue in you. Fair. But then, you know, on the other hand, when you look at Tampanese, when they change almost the whole team, mm. could that have taken the momentum off? Yes. So, I mean, yep. you know, it can really go either Both. way. Exactly. Kind of you have an absolute good point, you know, uh, to digress a bit. Joshua has rightly mentioned that, you know, on the, when you rest your team, chemistry, sometimes momentum, you know, it, it just start when the first team goes on the pitch, they take, a, they, it probably takes like a half, a first half to get the rhythm going again. You know, you never know. And also, like what you say, if you put in a lot of emotional, uh, uh, I would say factors and momentum riding. You know, it, if you concede the early goal, you know, things can go down south really quickly as well. So, football can go uh, both ways. So, thank you, AL, for the fantastic comment. Uh, Raymond Sim says Boris versus Pedro. Yeah, Botoluzo versus Kopitovic. It's going to be a matchup to be seen tomorrow. Uh, Jeron, thanks for tuning in. He says Moritz played striker when Pedro had a three game ban. Yeah, there could be a you know, uh, potential, but you know, definitely Botoluzo is going to play tomorrow. So, Moritz, I think he'll be off the bench if I'm not wrong. I don't know where he's going to start. He, it's a bit, he's lacking a bit of pace. When Morris came on in the 60th, 61 minute, and then in the 80th minute, he was really tired. So it could be a super sub for Haogang. Anyway, thanks to Jeron for the, 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 the comment. Uh, last comment before we move on to our, our show. He says, after the AFC Cup fixtures, Haogang got uh, and seeing how they kind of dominated the opponents, and after that, Haogang looked better. He, okay, thank you, Jeron, for the comment. I think. I, yes, you can see how they are. I think we will talk about Haogang more. Uh, address this comment later. We will talk about them more. Do you want to uh, address this comment? Yeah, I mean, we'll probably touch on it a bit later. But, mm. you know, we've seen in recent seasons how the AFC Cup can, you know, be detrimental to clubs. Like yep. Tampanese last season when they played in the AFC Champions League. Mm. Remember they lose, lost to Jumbuk, like, I don't know, heavy, heavy they defense. Hammered, and no? they came back, you know, they ended the season really badly. Mm. But, you know, Haogang... They've gotten a little bit better as it's progressed and you can see it in the Singapore Cup as well. Yeah, most definitely. Okay, so thank you all for the comments. Really appreciate the support. 
uh, let's move on to our next point for templates. I think it's our last point. Um, let's see now. Key players. All right. Uh, last comment before we quick one. Uh, Marsha says, How can getting stronger as a team? Yes. Uh, chemistry wise. So you never know. After tomorrow's final, are they going to keep the core for next season? If they do keep the core, you can, you can see them possibly fighting for top three next year. Yeah. I mean, honestly, if you look at the signings, probably I'll talk about it a bit later. Krychek has been the fantastic best from Ballastia to them. You know, you would have thought that, you know, Pedro and Moritz with more international experience yep. in recent years will come and be the star player. Hmm. But, you know, to me, Krychek has been outstanding. Yes, Krychek, Pedro, Botteluzzo. What a great signing for Haogang. Uh, okay, so let's talk about the last key point about uh, Tampanese. They are key players to look out for. So I think this is quite self-explanatory. I'm sure you guys are, who are all in the, the, the live stream right now, there's, I think there's 12 of you all. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, the fact that these are the players that you see on a regular basis for Tampanese, so nothing to surprise you. So you've got Captain Yase Hanapi, uh, midfield anchor Kyo Komura and I would say kind of a difference maker for Tampanese he's kind of scores crucial goals for them uh, Taufik Sopano. Uh he's got a bit of flag I, I see some comments about him that he's a bit inconsistent but he does deliver the goods sometimes when he's called upon so yeah I mean what's consistent about him now is he's consistently finding himself in the Singapore squad yes. which is good for him you know he's yes. kind of a late bloomer and it's his credit I think probably to Gavin Lee also for mm. you know bringing out the best in him in recent years and of course, Kyoga, you know, there's a lot of talk about him applying for PR and whatnot. Yes. And how come, much he loves Singapore. Come on, Singapore, get so. him the PR, man. He, you know, <laughs> on a chat, right, with my friends, I was saying that he collected uh, on the Silver Fox podcast. Do check it out uh, with Kyoga. He's, he spoke English for most of the interview. I mean, he did speak English all the way. So it goes to show his commitment to learn English. He said that he picks up trash. Uh, this sounds a bit funny, but he picks up like rubbish outside old, uh, our, I keep saying old Tampanese, our Tampanese hub uh, as a voluntary work every Sunday. What a lad this guy is. Can, can, can Singapore, can you like expedite the, the citizenship and get him onto the pitch? I think we need him sorely on, in the middle of the pub for Singapore. Definitely. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> we'll see, we'll see, you know, I mean, we'll see when he eventually, you know, if or yeah. when he eventually Gets, gets the citizenship. Yeah. PR citizenship or whatnot. But you know, at the moment, it looks like he's going to be staying at Tampanese. Yeah, for, for a five-year contract. For a while. First, or, first yeah. ever five-year contract for a Singapore Premier League player. Uh, yeah, so that's unprecedented. And I think this is the faith that Tampanese... I think it goes to show, I, I will imagine, this is my assumption, don't quote me on this, but I will imagine behind the scenes, he's been such an exemplary uh, player. I, I, I imagine the way he trains, the way he conducts himself. I think Tampanis views him as like the role model for the young players to adopt, you know. Coming from Japan, you know, from J3, is it J, J2 or J3 club? If I'm wrong, he was even in the Japan under 18 squad. Yeah. At a younger level, he's playing for a Japan national team. So, and he's shown his class every game, you know, he scores worldies of course. every other game. He's got the winner, the, the nail, the dagger against Geylang. I was so disappointed, but what a player he is. He's very composed on the ball. It's like, you know, when you watch Tampanese live, then you see the real if the real kind of uh, impact he has on the team. Sometimes on, on YouTube stream and on, you know, you don't really see the full, you know, but his positioning is always on part, on point for Tampanese. You know, it gives that kind of um, stability that the anchor that Tampanese needs in the midfield. So, yeah. These are the three key players. Anything, any more things you want to talk about this three specific, specifically or you want to move on? Yeah, I mean, Yase has, has his moments as well, you know. <laughs> he has a bit of a temper. At well, we, as much as he's a key player, you know, controlling the midfield, he goes forward, contributes to the goals here and there. But maybe another potential storyline is whether he can keep his hit. Maybe Haogang will go against, you know, against uh, Tampanese versus Tanjung Paga in the last fixture of the premier, the season or the second last uh, there was a bit of controversy with Hanapi and the Tanjung Paga coaches sorry excuse me yeah so maybe a bit of a hot hit sorry I'm so sorry if I offend anyone by saying that but you know uh, he's the captain after all you know so I'm sure the reason why Tampanis assigned him as the captain and Kyoga is the vice captain I think these two have been really pivotal for Tampanese success and the chemistry that they play the game that they play all right, so we move on. So if I'm not wrong, the next slide is going to be Haogang. All right, Haogang, cheetahs. Okay, so we'll talk about the road to the finals. Um, so uh, uh, just a fun fact that Haogang has not won a silverware uh, ever since they were founded. Uh, on Wikipedia, it said they were founded in 2006. So I may be, I may be wrong there because there's not there was a Haogang fan that said 1998. So I'm sorry if I got my facts wrong. 
Um, so hi, Ryan Tune says hello. Hi, thanks for tuning in. And yeah, so uh, potentially the first silverware incoming for the Cheetahs, this Singapore Cup Finals. You know, if they do win it, it'll be their first ever silverware, which is could be a storyline to write. You know, to your point about like the momentum riding high, our, our the people in the chat saying that the, the team, you know, riding high on that momentum, this is going to be definitely a storyline to look out for. And I'm sure this is a motivation for the players to give it their 120% on the pitch tomorrow. Yep, so um, interesting. I didn't know that they didn't have a silverware yet. So quite an interesting fact. All right, so we move on to the key notes for Haogang United. All right, so this has been the, sorry, not key notes. This has been the road to the finals. All right, so the road, road to the finals. Uh, the first game, they lost to Tanjung Baga 3-1. So I think that was when people started to panic. You know, I, I said when Geylang lost, I said, for Geylang, as a Geylang fan, I thought, okay, don't worry. Geylang has this covered, you know, Haogang lost. I think that's their closest competitor. But then Haogang came and soundly beat Geylang 4-1 at the Haogang Stadium. That was a very fantastic performance from the Cheetahs. Uh, Geylang looked really flat. Uh, I would say injuries and whatnot played a part, but you know, that's for a storyline for another day. And then their next game, they beat Tampines Rovers 1-0, which we addressed earlier on. Sahil Suhaimi's hand of God goal. And then semi-finals, they went up against Elbrex Nigata. We did mention earlier on, early on uh, first leg was, I think Elbrex will be kicking themselves, not winning that game. Now, looking at it. Yeah, they were 3-1 up. Yes. I think when they 3-1, they had plenty of chances. They were 3-1 up. And yeah. then... No, sorry. Three, sorry, they, they scored... Uh, Haogang scored 3-2. And then later, they Haogang considered the penalty right after that. Yeah. So, uh, if Kobayashi had... Con uh, uh, what's that word? Convert. Capitalized, converted, capitalized on that penalty, it would have been 4-2. And then we will be sitting here very... Could be looking at a different cha uh, champions lineup today. But... Um, uh, what's the keeper's name? I'm so sorry. Uh, how, uh, Albrecht? Yeah, uh, Haogang. Haogang? The young... Uh, Hazel Yazid. Hazel Yazid, wrong. right? Yeah. He had a fantastic save for Haogang. I'm so sorry. So, just a little bit. I'm a bit... My knowledge of local football is not up to T yet, but definitely getting there. But fantastic save from him. And then, after that, Haogang scored the equalizer, 3 all. And then, Albrecht will be kicking themselves because, second leg, Haogang resoundly beat uh, Albrex 4-2. So this has been their road to the finals. So with that being said, uh, we got a comment here. Uh, I, yeah, the keeper, Marsha, says, Aizo. Yeah, Aizo. Aizo yeah, I'm it. so sorry. Thank you, Marsha, for pointing it out. That's why we love people in the stream so that they can uh, point us, uh, point out, and please, if we have said something that is uh, we is a mistake or controversial, please do say it in the comments so that we can address it. And sometimes it's honest mistakes from us. So we thank you for uh, correcting me. I should have put in like I should have seen my list, messy list. <laughs> so sorry about that. All right. So uh, thank you so much. So we move on to the next slide, which is um, let's talk about the keynotes for Haogang. Keynotes for Haogang. Uh, so before we move on, Spectral says 3 1 Tampines win. Okay. Thank you for the comment. Thanks for the prediction. Uh, stay tuned to see our predictions for today. It will be at the end of the stream. So with that being said, thank you so much. And then let's move on to the next point for Haogang. The difference maker. Shawal Anwar, I will imagine. I think his pace has been fantastic. Every time I see Haogang, right? Shawal Anwar has been like, you can, it's like that, that it factor that you just see on the screen. It's like, wow, this guy is like Lestian. He's like Singapore's Lestian, you know? Yeah. He's, yeah, he's got that kind of pace that will, uh, that the opponents really have to respect. So his stats don't look really, not say very impressive, but he's been very consistent for Haogang, you know? Every time when they need a goal or two, He's up, you know, sometimes Botoluzo can struggle to find form. He 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 scores he scores goals in he tends to score like like in a like two game stretch and then he goes quiet for like four games, Botoluzo, and then I think that's where Shawa Anwar picks it up. His football uh, and uh, thank God he's been picked up. Uh, the previous uh, friendly in Vietnam, he wasn't picked because of some family issues, right? Yeah. So thank we're gonna see him in the Mitsubishi Cup, that'll be fantastic. But yeah. Uh, I put it down here because he's been a difference maker for Haogang United. Your thoughts about Shawa Anwar? Yeah, really exciting player. You know, he always likes to preempt things. Like mm. you saw in the first leg where he capitalized on yep. the defenders, Mystic. hit the back. And then the second leg, you know, fantastic ball. He controlled it and he finished it. <laughs> so I think he's definitely one of Singapore's best finishers for sure. Yep. And playing as a winger is a bonus, you know, especially in a time where we see Faris Ramni and Gabriel Kwak struggling for form a little bit. And yeah, it's good to see the emergence of, of him in recent years. Yep. He's been fantastic for us. Uh, he's been such a pivotal uh, player for Haogang United this year. And then look for him to, you know, 
get the ball, get the engine going for Haogang in the finals tomorrow. All right, so difference maker for Haogang. Let's go on to the next point. Sorry, I have to. You have to see my beautiful face or ugly face for the matter. Um, next point: the leaky defense for Haogang. I think this is going to be a very key component as to why, if you are, heck, no, if you are, if you, are, if you talk, Tampines are going to win. I think this is the biggest aspect of why Haogang will struggle, which is their defense. So, in the vlog, I, 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 I just thought it'd be easier to just show this. It was from the vlog. I stole it from the vlog. Um. Haogang United this year in the season, they scored, they conceded the most goals, 71 goals. But they did score quite a bit to, to, to even it out. So the goal difference is like minus six, but 71 goals conceded. That is... Oh. That works out to almost three goals a game, if you think about it. Yes. Average it out. Average it out. Like they, 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 of course, this was uh, highly, not say highly skewed, but the why this goal difference is so uh, high goals against was so high was because of the 9-4 trashing that they got and if I'm not wrong I think we're going to talk about it the Japanese yeah. beat them 7-1 yes well. yes. so 7-1 9-4 all these high scoring games you know we we will uh, I, I think I didn't okay so all these high scoring games I think it goes to show that offensively they're actually alright you know but I think defensively they've been looking t- terrible you know but with that being said I think the Singapore Cup they've shot up the back and they look really good at the back. I mean, look better definitely in the uh, in the cup competition as compared to the league season. And I won't, I'm not too sure what is the real reason behind it. Could be tactically or you know maybe some personnel changes here and there. But this is going to be a, one of the key aspects as to why Haogang may potentially lose tomorrow. Their leaky defense. For sure. I mean, if you look at the first leg against Albrecht in the semi-finals, Albrechts were at will at them to be honest with you they could have scored more to be very honest yeah I think one factor to consider is that you know how Kang I may be wrong but they seem like the only team besides Young Lions of course without no, foreign at, at the back I mean uh, Sailors you have Pedro mm. and then you know Tampines you have yeah, well it is it just yeah. say that we have they have uh, Kaishu Yama, Yamazaki, Yamazaki. Yeah, yeah but hasn't really been playing and he's more mm. of like a central midfielder as yeah, well he hasn't played no. the Singapore Cup yet so uh, they've got Lionel Tan at the back and um and and the uh, and the Saplin. Yeah. yeah. And then full back. I think Mohamin was playing in the first leg. Yeah. Not sure second, I can't remember. And Nazar Nazar, left Nazar, back Nazar. as well. Yeah. So I mean it's a bit leaky. I mean not a bit quite leaky. And then of course, even in their goalkeeping department, it's been changed quite a bit. You mm. know, we had Mukundan and then uh first leg was Zaino Golam who started and then Aizil Yazid came on and second leg he played. So, yes. I mean, we'll probably see Aizil in goal tomorrow, I think. 17 year is a very big responsibility to play against good Boris experience. Kopitovic. Yeah, Boris but really good experience. Perfect penalty save. I think maybe he could be potentially Hassan Sani's uh, replacement in the future when Hassan Sani finally uh, hangs up his international boots. Okay, so uh, PP Spartans has commented. He says, Haugang United was previously, was previously Previously was named Marine Castle, Sengkang Marine and Sengkang Pongol throughout the years. Only in 2011, they changed the club name to Haogang United and the mascot to the Cheetahs. So thank you so much, PP's Button. I think that was kind of how we had that uh, difference, you know, uh, between just now because your comments say you've been supporting Haogang since 1998. So I, I, I'm sure you're stoked to see Haogang in the finals. You know, hopefully Haogang can bring back a trophy back to uh, Haogang United. I'm sure the Hools and all the diehard fans will love to see that. So thank you for your comment. Thanks for addressing that. And you know, we, I, I learned something new today. So thank you so much that they've been, they were named the what? The Marine Castle, the Sinkang Marine. I heard of Sinkang Marine before, but Sinkang Pongo and the Marine Castle never. So thank you so much. It goes to show what a diehard fan you are. Really appreciate, really appreciate the love and support for SPL and for your Haogang. And okay, so... Yeah, so as I think we just wrap this up for the Haogang defense. You know, ultimately, I think they are looking better in the cup competition. But I mean, if Tampines can get things going, their track, uh, Haogang's track record in the back, this could be quite scary for them. So with that being said, let's move on to our next point, which is key players. All right, so the key players to look out for, uh, Haogang United. Again, these are if you guys follow the football, I think it's quite self-explanatory. You got uh, the likes of Pedro Botteluzo. Uh, Christian Krajicek and Sahil Suhaimi. So Sahil Suhaimi, is, um, he should have scored more goals in the outbreaks. He had a one-on-one chance with Takahiro Koga and he missed it, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, he's been having quite a resurgence this yes, season. Yes. You know, playing as a number 10, he's way in with the goals, linked up well with the likes of, you know, on his sides, he has Amy Rekka and 
Shawalana. Shawama. In front, you know, for the most part, has been Pedro. So I think this front four has been excellent. Yeah. With Krychek also making the runs from deep. And yeah, Kr- I mean, Krychek was fantastic the second league. No one can doubt their offensive quality that they have. Yeah, it's, it's the back. <laughs> where they are at the back, you know, that's been part of their inconsistent season. Yes. You know, Krychek, un- uh, Krychek will be one of the more underrated players. You know, I don't think he's... When other opposition teams or fans look at Haugang, they look at Botteluzo, they look at Moritz, you know, but I think Krychek has been quietly having a, such a great season for them. Uh, he was fantastic in the second leg in the vlog, you know. I Unfortunately, I couldn't get much uh, footage, but he before Moritz came on, he was the key pivotal factor. For, he's similar to Kyoga, you know, in the midfield. He really pulls the strings for Haugang. And uh, Botteluzo, Botteluzo, I mean, I don't know. There's been some doubt saying that he's a flop, but I mean, for a foreigner. But he used to play for Sao Paulo, you know, big club. I mean, he didn't really play first team for when he was younger, like he was at Sao Paulo. Um, so let's address some comments before we move on. Uh, Mohamed S says, uh, Haugang has everything to play for. You win SG Cup, you get AFC Cup placing. Fantastic. That's a good point. So all the more so you got a higher a, uh, reason to go all out to win the cup, you know, so that you can get uh, AFC Cup placing for next season. Thank you so much, Mohamed, for the comment. So I'm assuming you're going for a Haugang win. So with that being said, thank you. Uh, Spectral said, I can't wait for tomorrow. The atmosphere is going to be rocking. Exactly. Exactly. I think the Haugang Hools and the Haugang fans are going to be loud. And then Tampanese Rovers as well. The stacks, I think they got a, quite a good uh, following as well. So I think it's going to be buzzing. You know, one thing, just to digress a bit, the Haugang fans, when the Hulls, when they were, if you watch the vlog, right, they were, support, they were shouting for 95 minutes. I couldn't, I was struggling to shout over them and then I lost, I kind of lost my voice. Fantastic atmosphere. And then to your point, Spectral, I think it's going to be, you know, the crowd is going to so easily join into the chance. You know, it's so easy to join. It's very, uh, uh, not, that addic- not addictive. Very easy going. Yeah. Yeah. Very easy to catch. Uh, Joel says Botteluzo. Yeah, Botteluzo. Hopefully he scores tomorrow. You know, how gang they probably need him to, to step up to the plate. Um, so Marsha says, hopefully how gang wins tomorrow. Thank you very much for the comments. All right. So I think we are closing, we are going to the end, which is going to be our predictions. Let me see any more points here. Okay, so the last point before we talk about predictions, we talk about their we are going to talk about their head to head. So their last five matches. I was surprised to see that. I thought Tampines would be like four four wins for, for, for Tampines. But actually, Haugang has been, been the better team. Three to two. So, um, sorry, it's a bit small for us. So, if you can see uh, the latest fixtures of def- what we've mentioned, the yep. AFC Cup, uh, not AFC Cup, sorry, Singapore Cup uh, group stage fixture where they won 1-0. And then the last one, they, they, in the league, they played 4-1. A Tampines won that game uh, at Haugang Stadium. And then later follow it, uh, they won... The next one will be 4-2 Haugang and then 4-2 also? Yeah, 4-2. Two 4-2s two in a row for Haugang and then the, the start of the season, Tampines routed them 7-1. Yeah. So, I mean, I think the anomaly here, the outlier would be the 7-1. I mean, it could be the start of the season. Haugang would look really shaky. Haugang was really like out of form at the start of the season and then mid, midway, they, they got a good form. You know, they were, they were fighting for the fourth place and then at the end, they tailed off quite a bit. But, you know, with that being said, I think Haugang seems to be... Maybe things are going to their favour. You know, like what the, our friends have mentioned in the comments. They've got all to play for. First silverware potentially for the club. And the fact that they have the better head-to-head with Tampanis. 3-2. to two. I, know, I don't know where your predictions... I know, you, I know you're kind of where you're vying towards your predictions. Does this change your mind there, Joshua? You know, I mean, if there's only one thing I glean from this is that we can expect a go fest tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, usually cup finals, they tend to be low scoring. A lot of nil-nils, yeah. a lot of one-nils. I mean, of course, the last World Cup final was a 4-2. 4-2. But other than that, you know, you look back, Champions League final, one-nil. Last season, Carabao Cup and FA Cup final was yep. like what? Nil-nil, both a nil-nil, if I'm yep. wrong. So, I mean... I mean, you can discount that in the Singapore Cup, I think. I mean, yep. you look at the semi-finals, both games, you know, go fast. Go fast. I mean, of course, the Tampani second leg. Was I a absolutely agree. So, um, yeah, yeah Mohamed S commented, he said, we have to know that Haugang has a 17-year-old in goal. Yeah, we did address that, Aizil. But he was fantastic against Alberex. I think. And he's facing the highest scoring yeah. player in the in world. In the world, in calendar the calendar year. year. Bad boy, Boris Kopitovich. But with that being said, I, to address your comment, right, Muhammad, is, um, he only started later on in the season. So I think these f- three matches, the first three matches, he didn't play. 
right? Then I think the one definitely the maybe even the four one he didn't play. I'm not too sure. The I may be wrong. Nil, I don't think he played. As well. Yeah. So yeah. so is is uh, with that being said, we are we we did mention earlier on that we are stoked to see him to play. You know, uh, watching to play. You know, seventeen year old big uh, responsibility in his hands, and you know this is really good experience for him to grow. Yeah, and then uh, Joel says could be some backup goalkeeper, and then uh, Marsha says even if Hagan lose to any teams, they wouldn't give and keep on trying. The holes and the fans have been showing support towards the cheetahs and be there for them through thick and thin. Yep, I think it's very safe to say that. Uh, thank you so much for the comment. Um, one thing I want to address is that all the Singapore clubs, I think their their fans have been fantastic for them. The ultras, if you can call them. Um, you know, it's good to see. You know, at the end of the day. You know, we have our rivalries, you know, we sometimes we talk a bit of banter here and there, but ultimately I think we should be very proud that there's a lot of fans still going to watch the, their favorite teams every single week. Of kudos course, to you. Of course, kudos you know, to you. Not even me. I I haven't really ventured invested my time yet into the SPL. Maybe potentially in the future, but you know, big up to everyone there that, that you know is been big Singapore football fans. You know, just a quick fact as well. Um a little bit why you know Joshua is a big football fan. We all we love talking about football generally world football but you know for me so i've got a bit of football history in me uh, my grandfather used to play for singapore but clearly the the skills did not translate to here right so here i am spouting nonsense in front of you in my camera so i guess that's where my skill is you know instead of my legs i'm talking nonsense to you guys so it's kind of like why i'm very interested in local football because you know from my grandfather's time to now i really like to see the growth you know to for spl to grow your points joshua yeah, I think it's great, you know. You yeah. talk about the banter between the fans and definitely, yep. you know, fans are really a big part of football. Yeah. I mean, we saw it most during COVID when stadiums were empty, right? Yeah. And players, like, what did they have to play for in a way? Yeah. So, yeah, you talk about fans, you talk about banter. I completely agree. Without fans, without banter, you know, where would the enjoyment be in football? Exactly. The players won't enjoy it as much, you know. If Imagine a world where people did not like watching football and people are playing empty stadiums. So, I mean... Definitely, you know, fans are a big part of football. Of course, of course. So, um, let's see now. Uh, we are aiming for a one-hour show. So, I think 47 minutes. I think we are on time. Uh, thank you so much for all the comments. I think this live stream has been fantastic. Uh, we love interaction. So, the reason why we like to do live streams instead of like videos is because it's very, I feel, we feel that uh, for local football to grow is to be interactive with the fans. So, you know, the fact that we are addressing your comments, we love to meet you guys, you know, in the future, definitely if you see us, please feel free to come out, talk to us, you know, we'll be more than happy to address your comments and talk about football. Uh, Muhammad says, uh, Zufaimi has been a pivotal player in Haugang midfield, a superb player and I hope he will continue in the AFF Cup in December. Yeah, fantastic player, fantastic. He's the captain, right? Haugang's captain. He's been quite a pivotal part, maybe together with Krychek as well. Fantastic. Very good left foot, very good player. And, yep. you know, hopefully, hopefully he has a role to play in the AFF Cup. Of course, he definitely has a role to play, I'm sure. I'm sure. Okay, so thanks for the comment. And Joel said, I didn't address this. He said, uh, support the channel, guys. Make sure you're awesome if you haven't yet. And like, thank you so much, Joel. We, thank you. Thank you for your comments and your love. We, we love to see that. And then uh, Muhammad said, the Hulls has been cheering for Haga even when fans won't allow these two outside to cheer. All right. So to address this, thank you so much. Yeah. So in the vlog, I, I interviewed Chris, uh, Christoph, a Switzerland uh, native, right? And then he's working in Singapore, stays in Coven area. And he always watched the, he always watched the Cheetah in support. He watched with his good friend, David and Lucas. David and Lucas are father and son duo. Watch every game. The reason why I sat with them was because I recognized David and Lucas. I'm sure if you've seen them, you probably know, yeah, if you, you know, you've seen them in other games. But uh, Chris was, to digress a bit, Chris was talking to me about how in 2021, well, 20, uh, late 2020, when SPL was still going on, the Hools were all sent, standing outside the, 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 the railing and then they had social distancing, they were drinking beer and whatnot. And it, it goes to show that really hardcore, you know, you can imagine the time, the peak of COVID-19, the pandemic. And then Chris was saying the cars were going by and then they see like almost 200 people like, like you know, still supporting football club outside the there. And also uh, Jerome Douglas as well. He runs the, he used to run his own local football channel. He did a good documentary. I think the Haugang game was the one that he went to. So, you know, pick up to the che the cheetahs, you know, the holes, you know, fantastic support for the Haugang. You know, maybe... You know, I do support Geelang, but I don't know. Maybe I could convert to the dark side, you know, to Haugang. Fantastic fan support. Uh, I like Geelang because of their jersey. <laughs> so, um, 
Muhammad says he's also one of the best right back in Haogang. Okay, fair, fair. I think he's been instrumental part of Haogang's play. Thank you so much for the comment. So Joel says, I support Haogang because I live in the Northeast area. Fantastic. I know it's good to see that, you know, you love your team because of where you stay. Um, well, for me, I stay in, we stay nearest to Geelang. So, I don't know. I think Geelang, yeah. Mm, I, stay, yeah I stay closer yeah, to Geelang. I mean, could it be that now... I could be closer to Tampanese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. So maybe... But of course, they both play at the same stadium. So yeah. I think what's nice about Hong Kong is that they're called Hong Kong and they play in Hong Kong. Yeah, fantastic. It's, it's such a feel-good uh, thing about Hong Kong, you know. They, they, I mean, Hong Kong United... Paga now plays at Drogis. <laughs> I mean... Yeah, where's the, nice where's the link? Yeah. yeah, exactly. So it's kind of like the kind of, uh, you know, grass pitch, natural grass pitch, Hong Kong United, Hong Kong Stadium. Everything writes itself. So, fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, Masha says, Satu hati sumpai mati. Satu hati. Oh, that's the one H, one H, right? Eh, no. What, what? Sorry, my Malay is not very good. Satu hati sumpai mati. Okay, I know mati means die. Uh, satu hati. How come till I die? How come till I die? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. Perhaps. <laughs> perhaps, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that's, that's one of their chants. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there is, there is, it is. It is. It was very nice. The chant was fantastic. Uh, so Muhammad says I support Hong Kong even though I live in the West they were a family club whose players staff coaches have a great relationship fantastic you love to see that All right. and then last yeah I, I think it means Hong Kong still like that correct so Satu Hati Satu Hong Kong well, I'd love to see you know oh whoa, 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 okay <laughs> alright so in the I shouldn't be in, and it's so engrossed into this but then now we've got a bit of a rivalry going on so Spectre is it Rovers all the way Rovers all the way alright so um I think my grandfather used to play for Tampines, you know. Fun fact. So yeah, um, I don't even know where he played for, but uh, he was more national team. Anyway, okay. So, uh, I'm I you I feel feel free to go ahead in the chat, you know, if you want to feel free to talk about your teams, you know. Uh, it's gonna be a big matchup tomorrow, and you know, with that being said, tomorrow's game. Let's go on to our final slide here, which is our predictions. So, uh, Joshua, I need you to take over for a while when I. I, I do some editing on my site. It's yeah. very fast, yeah. but please I mean, go ahead. You see that, look, Tampanese Rovers founded 1945. So it's definitely possible that, you know, your grandfather might yeah. have yeah. had a stint with them. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, you know, look at Jalan Basar Stadium. Hopefully they open both sides of the stadium. I think it's going to be a great game. Really looking forward to it. You know, I really hope the weather is good. The last two days, the weather has been decent, I think. Um, today has been good. It hasn't rained. So hopefully there's no rain tomorrow. If not, you know, it's going to dampen the occasion a little bit. Yeah. But nonetheless, I think it's going to be a great game. I think it's going to be a goal fest. And yeah, you know, two very good offensive teams. Tampanese, to me, have the better defense. I think most people would agree. But, you know, ultimately, I think we're going to talk about predictions that it'll come down to who's better on the day. Yes. Because I, I think Hong Kong has shown on their day they can beat anyone. Yes. Whether it's Albrex. Sailors, you know, I think they've competed very well against Sailors this season. You yes. know, even when Sailors were doing really well. The 9 4. Not the 9 4. <laughs> there was a 1 1 draw. I remember watching yeah. it with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here. There's a 1 1 draw that they should have won. Yeah. They had the last minute chance, they didn't take it. So I think Hong Kong have shown that on their day, they can beat anyone. Yes. And Bernice, you know, a lot of people wrote them off. You know, if you compare the two squads, arguably Hong Kong have the strongest squad on paper. Mm. But, you know, I think Gavin Lee, the young squad that he has, you know, look at the average age of the squad. Amazing. Right? Amazing. Yeah. So I think Gavin Lee has been fantastic for Tampanese. You know, no slight to them. They finished third. Very respectable with the team that he has behind the likes of Sailors and Elberex. Uh, yeah. So um, Joel said, now nah, they should use artificial grass, real grass like Sunday League like that. I mean, Topayo Stadium. Right. To your point, Joel. Well, I mean... <laughs> let's, let's just reserve that for another day, yeah? <laughs> most stadiums, grass... <laughs> Overseas is real grass. Yeah, huh? yeah. So, yeah. you know, it's just to keep up the times. Not to keep up the times, sorry. We, you know, it's more natural to play. I'm, I don't know. I, maybe we should go and interview some players and ask them what's their opinions about real grass and artificial grass. Yeah, so what's the big difference there? Um, Muhammad says, big matchup is how Lionel and Anders contain Boris Kopitovich. Fantastic point right there. If they did like how they do during the group stage, all good for Haugam. Yeah. Lionel Tan has been so inconsistent. Had a fantastic game in the 1-0, but I think like what Mohamed said, when if they can do, if they do contain Boris Kopitovic, look for Hogan to take it. Look for Hogan to take it. Uh, Joel says, uh, and Andrew Au has been good too. His first touch, what a youngster. Yeah, fair point, fair point. Thank you. 
uh, Hao Gang Holes is amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, Fathullah, is that Muhammad Fathullah? Sorry if I'm mispronouncing. Sorry, I do apologize if I'm mispronouncing pronouncing some of your names. I'm so sorry. But yes, thank you so much for the uh, support. I'm sure you're a Hao Gang Holes yourself. You know, really fantastic atmosphere. I first had, first time ever see the holes in action and it was fantastic. So uh, with that being said, let's move on to the predictions, right? So our predictions. Let's see where I can put this on our predictions. All right. So before let's talk about, before we talk about the predictions, I mean, the chat has put in really good points. I don't know whether that has swayed your decision. You know, uh, I don't know whether is it uh, extra time if it's draw or is it straight to penalties? I'm not too sure. Not too as sure. Well. I, I think probably someone in the chat can let us know. But yeah, we are. If I'm not wrong, mm. in the semi-finals was it straight to penalties? Yeah, I think. All right, so straight to could be straight to penalties. Straight to penalties, and then True Gruner says yes, guys. Thank you so much, True Gruner. He's a big Arsenal fan, clearly from the name. Josh from uh, he's from Essex, Essex in UK. Fantastic. I always love chatting with him because we are all Arsenal fans right now. Love to see it. Thanks, Josh, for tuning in. Uh, okay, so we've got the chat coming in with their, their prediction. So Joel says 2 1 for Hao Gang. Okay, fair, fair, fair. And then, um, so Muhammad has addressed, it, has, has addressed, has addressed our uh, doubts. He said that extra time after draw, then penalties. So similar, I think 120th minute, then penalties. So thank you so much for clarifying that on stream. And then extra time for themselves. Yes. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks, guys. And then um, Muhammad says, how going to win goal? We'll win by the odd goal. I'm hoping a corner kick header will settle all. I think tonight you're going to be dreaming of uh, Zufami, Inswinger, and uh, Ooh, Pedro. Pedro. Flick on. Flick on. I mean, it did happen in the second leg, you know. Uh, Pedro with the, 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 the second goal, if I'm not wrong. Wow. You look at the... So Gareth Kelgan. Thank you so much for tuning. He says, how going to nil? Wow. So as you can see, Again, as I said earlier on, the, the fans here has been a bit skewed towards one direction, you know. Um, no, no, look at the next two. Up oh, 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 okay, okay. Maybe I said too soon. All right, so uh, Spectral, I said 3-1 Tampanese. Rovers, Rovers all the way. Yeah, Spectral. All right, 3-1 Tampanese. Fair, very fair. I think that could possibly be the outcome. Um, AL says 5-2 Tampanese. 5-2. Wow. Uh, goals like, like what Joshua said. Goals galore. I think a very high scoring final. Yes, yes. You know, it's always very funny when people expect a goals galore, it becomes a, a goal drop. But then when you expect like, ah, it's going to be a very tight game, then the goals come, it comes raining down, right? So, you know, 5 2, potentially. Um, Fatris Ninja. Is that how you, I'm so sorry. Fatris, yeah, thank you. Haogang 4 2. Okay, 4 2, because in their head to head, they win, they won 4 2 twice. So this could be the third time on the trot. 4 2, possibly for Haogang. Um, Masha says Zufami's left leg is strong AF of course so in swinging ball to Pedro in to score the winner you never know so thank you so much for the comments guys thanks for all the predictions love to, please feel free to keep talking you know we love to chat only any number as long as Hogan wins that's the mentality right you know even if it's an ugly 1-0 win or even a penalties win you take it right so any football fan you are in the finals you will take whatever the football gives you even if it's penalties you of know? course of course you just take it if you win the cup yep so uh, Mama says have to take note after Fadao's took over how gang they played the <laughs> yeah, 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 Gen pressing. pressing. Okay, game pressing has got more goals. Okay, fair. Clock what happened football. to Clement Tio? Clement Tio, perhaps how Kang who could let us. Know. Yeah, so I'm so sorry. So sorry, maybe I we've not been too because we've been busy with like Premier League and but I mean we World did Cup. we did notice that for that was the world. Yeah, I, I also was looking like what happened what to Clement Tio? Yeah, Clement. whatever happened to Clement Tio? Uh, but then we did basically I think when since Fadal has taken over, he's been really good. You know how Kang has been had a good run of form. I think he's tactically uh, adjusted how gang to make it a bit more uh, not so like gang ho uh, what uh, all out attack no defense it's like what I say more pressing and also in the end he's they're more pressing but also at the end still have got more goals and the reason why they scored more goals which we didn't address earlier on is because of the efficient counter attacking football that how gang the likes of Shawa Anwar on the wings you know uh, Suhaimi they have the pace to to really uh, threaten Andre Morris and Krychek Krychek you know give, uh, delivering the balls and Farhan as well. Farhan has been quite... Uh, Farhan's goal in the second leg was... The deflection, right? I, it was a deflection, but the acute angle he shot it, it was so... I was blown. I was like, oh my... I didn't expect the goal to happen. No, it went off him. Oh, it went he off him? He was running. Someone else shot. Oh. It went off him and it went in. Oh. oh. 
<laughs> wow. Okay. So I, I even I didn't know that. Oh. So a deflection. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. So Fatri said, sit near the holes tomorrow if you are coming. All right. And we may potentially we may potentially sit near the holes. Sit near the holes. I did reach out to them. Maybe I'll do an interview or two with them. Uh, stay tuned. Maybe I'll do a vlog definitely tomorrow. So if you guys see a fool carrying a big ass gimbal, which I hope they'll bring, let me bring into the stadium. That's also fingers crossed. It's me, right? Uh, so just say hi. Come and say hi to me and Joshua and potentially Eddie as well from Sail- Sailor's Fan Talk. We'll be sitting with him um, to JBS. All right. So thank you so much for the comment. Marcia said, I think due to medical issue, not too sure too. So if it's a medical issue, we wish him all the best. I think, but. Uh, so no, not bad, but I think Haugang has improved after, uh, so quite a bit after he's left temporarily, I would imagine. So if it's medical issue, we wish him all the best. Hopefully he comes back to the stands. Clementio sacked. For that, was slightly better, but I think we should bring in Ang Mo coach, <laughs> to be honest. All right, thank you. How Dua. about Luka Lalic? <laughs> he might be out of a job. <laughs> you know, ex uh youth coach. Um, you know, he's, the first three games in charge was fantastic for Sailors. And then it all came crashing down for the Sailors. So maybe look at to Haugang. I'm sure the Haugang fans will go up in protest <laughs> if that happens. Uh, thanks for... So he said he's sacked. Uh, but I, I I think it's more of like the medical issues. So Muhammad says Clement has the World Cup fever. <laughs> maybe he's going to coach a World Cup team. You never know. Qatar, maybe. So, all right. So without further ado, thanks so much for... Don't want to digress too much. Thank you so much for the comments. And let's move on to our predictions. So Joshua, let's kick it off with you. What is your predictions for the finals? You know, it's always really, really hard to call Singaporean games. Whether it's yes, USA it or is. Singapore. It's an outswinger. Every fixture is an outswinger. It Outlier. always depends uh, how the team show up at the end of the day. But, you know, I'm going to give a prediction based on you know, if I think the teams both play their best, I'm just leaning towards the Tampanese win to nick it. All right. So, you know, I think mm. they have the better defense. At offensively wise, you can argue that perhaps you can even argue that Hawkeye have the better offense. But, you know, I think with Boris Kopevich, they're just going to nick it. I'm going for a 3 2 Tampanese win. 3 2 Tampanese win from Joshua. You heard it here first at the goal difference. Let me input it into the screen. Yeah. All right, three two. So uh we've got a comment here from Muhammad it says, nah, I'd rather get in Ideal Sharin or Sat Yaskara from Young Elephants. Young Elephants. All right. So potential maybe. Uh future coaching carousel at Haugang. Not carousel. Change at Haugang. And then we got the next comment. He says defending champions. So I'm sure Spectro will be very appreciative of your prediction of Tampanese defending their title. And I think, not title, sorry, their cup, yeah, they're the holders. So if I if they win this, I think they've won it 10 times. Again, the most celebrated team in the Singapore Cup. So, all right, so it moves on to my predictions. All right, so let me try multitask here. Let me put it on. Okay, so for my predictions, this is going to be heavily skewed because of the fact that I just went to the Cheetah Stadium. Fantastic with their fan support. And who doesn't love uh, a perfect storyline ending for Haugang? Like what Joshua mentioned earlier in the stream, you know, nobody expected Haugang to reach the finals. Let's be honest. You know, you should, people were touting, I would say, uh, I, I won't say Geelang, lah, but I think Albrex, uh, Sailors. Sailors and Tampanis. You know, honestly, the group yeah. with Tampanis, Tanrung Paga, Geelang and it Haugang. It could have swung, uh, swung anyway. Yeah. It really could have swung anyway because, you know, at the, at the, at, why I'm a Geelong fan because when I watch Geelong play, they play they play really good football, you know, overall complete football, just lacking a bit of depth here and there. But why I like them is because, you know, like what you said, the, the group B, any, on, a, on a good day, you could have seen Geelong in the semifinals. On a bad day, like what happened, they didn't even qualify with a, quite a horrific Singapore Cup performance. Yeah, so with that being said, I saw the atmosphere myself in Haugang who doesn't like a perfect storyline ending for Haugang, right? I think this is, and you know, like potentially one, uh, one of our f- uh, friends have said here, you know, he said that they have all to play for because of the fact that this could be AFC Cup for them, potentially. So AFC Cup placing, you know, with all to play for, this is going to be, to me, a Haugang victory. I'm going to go for Haugang. So uh, before I see my predictions, Muhammad says, uh, no one gave Haugang a chance in the group stage after their league performance. Yeah, they even lose to the Jacks in the first game, but turning around, exactly, you know, 
when I saw Hao Gang beat, uh, sorry, when Tanjung Paga beat Hao Gang, I was like, okay, Geelang is going to beat Hao Gang and then it's going to be a Tanjung Paga Geelang duel to see who makes it through. But Hao Gang has completely changed people's perspective of them. You know, fantastic that they turned it around. The Jacks, very disappointed. I've not been very impressed with Tanjung Paga. I think I mentioned this to Joshua. Tanjung Paga has looked really iffy. You know, I, out, out of the three teams between Geelang, I mean, sorry, four teams, Balestian, that, that, that. Uh, sorry, Balestia, uh, Tanjung Paga, Haogang, and Geelang. I will say that even Balestia and Tanjung Paga take those two as like a bit inconsistent teams. Yeah. But Tanjung Paga, I'm not being impressed with them. Anyway, um, thanks for the comment. Yeah, so who, as I said, who doesn't like a perfect uh, sorry, uh, fairy tale ending? So I'm going to go for a Haogang victory right now. So to defer from my co host Joshua, right? And Muhammad said we are a perennial underdogs. For sure. Our best response was in 2011, 2019, the semis, and both lose the four teams. All right. So, with that being said, I'm going to go for. Didn't you tell me off stream that Tempe was going to win 3 1 or 3 2? You said 3 2. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. So, you did stick to your guns right there, right? So, of course. So, 3 2 for Joshua. Okay. You know what? I'm going to go for a Boris Kopitovic blank, right? And I'm going to go for a 3 1 victory for Haugam. I think he's not going to score tomorrow. That could be a hot take for me. Really hot take, yeah? Because potentially not scoring. So, I'm going to go for a 3 1 victory. You know, like what Joshua rightly mentioned before I gave my predictions. For Singapore football is really hard to predict. You know, it can really go come swing. If it's a goals, if it's goals galore, our prediction is probably way off the mark. Definitely. Yeah. Even five goals is, I think, it could be a six goal or seven goal trailer potentially. In a cup final? I think that'll be surprising, but you know. Yeah, you never know. We'll see, we'll see. You know, maybe one team will get an early goal and try to see it up. Yeah, for but, sure. You know, knowing Singapore football, it'll yeah. be hard. So, a little <laughs> context. I'm sure the people who are still watching and who have tuned in, thank you so much again. Um, You know, Singapore football, once you reach 70th minute, players get a bit fatigued and tired. That's when the gung ho kind of attack, kind of, you know, lack of midfield goes on and it's just counter attacks and counter attacks. So, you know, that's why it's goals galore. Uh, so, with that being said, thank you. Uh, Joel says, people actually betting in SPL. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of people betting in SPL. So, that's a fact, you know. I, I, th- I guess that's what's the love for Singapore Premier League as well. The odds and the betting. But yeah, thanks for the comment. Uh, which side will you be sitting in the match? Tampani side or Haogang side? Thank you so much, Mighty King, for that comment. So, we will be sitting in the Haogang side. So, I paid, I, I, I bought the tickets. On behalf of Joshua, and um, I, I picked Haogang. I'm sorry, Joshua. If you want to see in the Tampines, like, I'm very it's sorry. It's fine, you know. I'm I'm a neutral. To be honest, I'm not really cheering for anyone. But you know, I just want to see a good game of football. And yep. you know, my prediction is not based on like who I support, but it's really based on you know what Analysis. I think. But you know, it could really swing. Yeah. Very neutral. Depending on I, who shows up. On, I think on both of day. us on this stream. Let's clarify that you know, Joshua is not really. He's big football local, big football fan in general, but I don't think he has a favorite Singapore Premier League club. You know, it's just more, you know, yeah, seeing really neutral when it comes to Singapore neutral. football. And <clears throat> of course, I do favor watching certain teams play. Yep. Admittedly, I do like watching Tempanese play because yep. they do play football good way, you know, on the ground. You see how they like to play out from the back. Yep. I do think that uh, Hokang are very exciting to watch as well this season. Mm. And yeah, teams that, you know, sailors, of course, with the foreigners they have, they are one to watch, yes. of course, you know, to see how they're doing. It's an exciting project. But yeah, I do have favorites and, you know, Tampanese and Hokang <coughs> deniably are two of those. So I'm really excited for tomorrow. Yeah. So Joshua is fantastic in his analysis. Um, I'm sure you guys will, if you guys tune into more, you know, World Cup, uh, Premier League, uh, SPL content you see more Joshua's takes he's got really good takes that's why I love him on as my co-host you know we've been good friends for a long time and I really appreciate him being my co-host always there for the show and you know fantastic fantastic so um, so we'll be sitting in the Haogang side thanks Mighty King for your question hope that addresses your question where will you be sitting Mighty King I'm assuming you'll be there right so um, are you going to be sitting in the Haogang or Tampanese side Let maybe in the chat right now uh, live stream before we end the show do comment where you guys will be sitting at the game we would love to see that so at least tomorrow when we go to the game we will get to see um, I, I will try I, we will try to remember the name so that please come up to us if you want to say hi 
introduce yourself to us you know we really you know sorry if we, we don't catch your name at the first glance or we don't know who you are i think there'll be quite a few people i'm trying to we're trying to talk to and whatnot so thanks so much uh Marcia says see you guys tomorrow uh, come and cheer with the holes all right i'll be doing the vlog so it'll be hard to cheer in uh with the holes, but definitely the chants are fantastic from the holes, I gotta say. All right, so Muhammad says, hopefully 24 years of hurt will end for Hogang tomorrow. <laughs> that sounds like a very Arsenal thing to say, and even Liverpool thing to say before you all win the league. <laughs> yeah, I mean, from 92 <laughs> to yeah, all the way to 2018, 2019. Yep. Of course, of course. So, um, for me as well, Arsenal fan, I mean, this year, maybe our fortunes favours us in the in this season. I don't want to jinx it. Uh, Fatri said how gang said all right so how gang for you Fatri uh, AL says Tempanis uh, AL with the 5-2 out singing uh, prediction Tempanis you know he'll be there um, so Master says we'll be sitting with how gang for sure all right good to see good to see uh, is it just me but my ticket says it's at level 2 um, level 2 means I don't know I'm so, I, I will assume level 2 is the ground right then um, how gang is level 3 I don't know. I'm so I'm sorry. This is sure. just me spouting nonsense. I yeah. don't take my word for it. Um, I don't know. Maybe tomorrow you Level just show two them. Level 2 might be the, where the wave fans usually sit. Which is what I think he's trying to say. I think so. The, I mean, my assumption would have been Tampanese in the ground for Haugang at the top. Or would they have split it half-half? Oh, maybe. Maybe potentially. Yeah. It could have been half-half. So, uh, north entrance and... Level the, 2 maybe for neutrals. I'm not too sure. I'm not, yeah. not too sure. Yeah, not too sure. Uh, Muhammad says, yeah, where, where the away fans said. usually say. Yeah, so, oh, that means Tampani is going to be the away team for in terms of the fans wise. So, you know, we'll be sitting on, actually, I want to see on the top. I it, I, I assume that Haugang will be at the top. So, all the times I've been at Jalan Basar Stadium, fun fact, it's always, uh, I watch a, a Sailors matchup and then Joshua and I, we've been there. Sailors have, every time we watch Sailors live, they've lost all games. Yes, four times. We've watched them and they've lost all four. So consider us as the sailors jinx. You know, if you want sailors to lose, just call us and we'll be there and they'll lose. Yeah, so and they'll be good. Left and right split. Yeah, so uh, I'll be sitting in Tampani. See you guys. All right, my ticking. If you guys see us, uh, if you guys see us, please feel free to say hi. You know, uh, always love to see you guys and chat with us, yeah, about football. Uh, Jairul Nazim, he's subscribed to the channel. I saw that. Thank you so much for subscribing. Appreciate it. Tampanese champions again. So you can see he's a Tampanese fan. All right. Thank you so much for your comment. So Tampanese champions. So everyone will see at the main, main grandstand. Okay. Yeah. So it's left to right. Yeah. Yeah. I think that would be a buzzing F. Yeah. North and South entrance. I think that would be such a... I think that's quite cool. Yeah, I, I bet you the two, the holes and the stacks the, 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 will be right at the corner. They'll be shouting at each other. Very interesting. So it's live, left, left and right split. So with that, um, we went a bit overboard in the show, but I think we can still, maybe another three more minutes. So uh, before we end the show, uh, let me put the, okay, so let me, okay, so we're going to do a major giveaway. This is in tune to the World Cup. So stay tuned. Yeah, so stay tuned. Uh, actually, also tomorrow, I may be doing a very small giveaway. Uh, maybe an interview, uh, ask some fun questions and I'll do a small giveaway. So do look out for it. You know, if you guys, I'll be, I'll be sharing on our Instagram pages or at the, when you guys are there, we'll, we'll see like, yeah. So I'm still planning about what the, the content is. So stay tuned for that. Uh, but the major giveaway is confirmed for the World Cup. So stay tuned for that. It's a really big giveaway. Is our heartfelt thanks to our fans and friends. Not fans, sorry, friends. You know, you guys, we treat you guys as very good friends. And we thought that this is a good time because the YouTube page is growing. Our Instagram page is growing. And World Cup season, who doesn't love World Cup? Yeah, I mean, we talk about Singapore Cup, whether Haugang, whether you are Geelang, whether you are Sailors fan, whether you are Tampanese fan, but I think World Cup is going to be a, going to be banging of a, a football spectacle event and we're going to do some uh, World Cup content as well so do look out for that so yeah we're going to do a major giveaway and last but not least let's do with the outro so the outro um, yeah so before with that being said anything you want to say Joshua anything you want to say you know honestly wearing a Liverpool kit I will miss Liverpool playing but you know it's good to catch up on whatever football there is at the moment so yep. now it's Singapore Cup from Sunday onwards we have the World Cup and of course you know thank you everyone for like tuning in as always whether it's the vlog whether it's a live show or even the shorter videos that we do you know really appreciate the spot yeah so um, the last two, let's see the comments so Marsha says we'll see tomorrow it's time to sleep and get enough rest yep that's very true and it's going to be it's going to be a buzzing of a game I think 
both fans are going to cheer the whole game. So you need, you guys, please go have ample of rest. It's very important. And then uh, get free World Cup jersey. Yeah. Uh, well, major giveaway. Stay tuned. You know, like, comment, subscribe on the pages. You know, go and definitely go and see our Instagram page. Uh, there'll be more updates on the Instagram page for sure. Uh, YouTube wise, may you may miss it. So please go. Uh, our name is the Gold Difference. Do check it out. The the and then uh, underscore Gold Difference. And then uh, with that being said, we're gonna do the outro. So get a great stream today. Thanks a lot. Uh, thank you so much, Joel. You've been there. You've been here. Uh, most of you have been here all the way. So we appreciate, you know, the time that you spend with us. We really do. We really do. Um, we, we definitely want to do this more in the future. More SPL, more live shows to kind of do give previews and, you know, fantasy teams maybe. Maybe we can talk about that. And yeah, we'll definitely uh, stay tuned for that. We'll plan for more in the future. And then, um, let me see, anything else we want to address? So, yeah, so let's, uh, maybe I'll do like a run through. So, uh, Singapore Cup final tomorrow, Jalan Besar Stadium, 5.30 kickoff, I think if I'm not wrong, 5 p.m. start the stream, I think. Uh, we'll be sitting at the Haogang site. Um, feel free to say hi to us. I don't know whether I'll be, I'll be wearing something a bit more iconic, so I'm going to stand out a bit. I don't know. I, I also, if you any of the Hools fans, are, are, are the Hougang fans supposed to wear black? I, I heard that the Hools uh, fed, uh, page was saying to wear black. It's, what's the significance? Are you guys going to wear black color or are you guys going to wear orange or you know the jerseys and whatnot? So, uh, yeah, with that being said, Hougang. Uh, oh, so Joel said, can't come for the final tomorrow because I'm busy. Oh, that's so sad. No worries. Always uh, in the future. Definitely, I'll, I mean, I'll be doing the vlog. So, if uh, I'll try and get it out ASAP. Maybe Sunday morning, I'll try and get it out. So if you want to see the live action and live experience on the fan stands, please do uh, stay tuned. So thank you, Joel, for uh, staying all the way. Appreciate it. Uh, yeah, so Fatri is so about the wearing black. So I, I see. So if, you, how, if you're a Haogang fan, do take note. Wear black. You know, that's to show the, the Haogang whole spirit, you know, and definitely the chance will be immaculate. Fantastic. So much as says, yes, wear black. So as a neutral, I'm not going to wear black. I'm so sorry, guys. Although I, I do did predict 3-1 for Haogang, I'm not going to wear black. Um, I, as, as my counterpart, he's rooting for Tampines, but I don't think he's going to wear yellow. I might wear black. You know? Oh, I, okay, okay. So, you know, someone... Black is a very common color. Common anyway. color, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Goodbye, quick. I may wear orange. Oh, orange. We'll see, we'll see. We'll see. Orange, orange is also a very nice color. So yeah, um, let's see now. Okay, so uh, uh, keynotes. I'm sure you guys. Uh, so, uh, and sorry, before I, I let before I end the show, do please uh, DM us, comment anything you can improve on. You know, suggestions. Just let us know. You know, we are more than happy to take in suggestions. We love to hear from you guys. This stream has been fantastic. You guys have been really participative. We are really appreciative. So we're going to end the show shortly. So thank you guys so much for the love and support. We are stoked for tomorrow's finals. Right? Look, do look out. We, are, we look forward to meeting you guys there. Maybe doing a small giveaway. We'll see. And then uh, with that being said, it's going to be a cracker of a game between Tampanese Rovers, the defending champions of the Singapore Cup against the fairy tale, potentially fairy tale ending uh, storyline, Haogang United. So with that, we thank you for your time. Uh, we thank you for the love and support for this, this channel. And also we look forward to meeting you guys. And we're, yeah, as I said, it's going to be a cracker of a game. The atmosphere is going to be fantastic. Anything from you, Joshua? Any final words? No, you know, I think I've uh, you know, said quite a lot about what I thought about tomorrow's game and how excited I am. So, you know, just looking forward to, you know, talking to people tomorrow and watching a good game of football. Fantastic. Fantastic. All right. So with that being said, Thank you guys so much for the time and effort, uh, time and for the time that you spend with us tonight. Uh, have a good rest, like what Marsha said, and then it's going to be a cracker of a game tomorrow. And with that, uh, Marsha says, see you guys tomorrow. Good night. Good night to you. Thank you very much. And with that, we will end the live stream. Uh, I still see 10 people. Thank you so much for tuning in for the, to this show. Hope it was very informative and fun for you guys, you know, interacting with friends, uh, uh, you know, fans alike and whether we whether we say good points or bad points. I don't know. Controver any controversial takes, let us know tomorrow when you meet us. And with that being said, thank you so much for tuning in. Like, comment, subscribe to The Goal Difference. Joshua here and Brendan here. We are signing out and thank you so much, guys. And we'll see you guys, not next time, see you guys tomorrow. So with that, cheers, mate.